Let's talk about how to service uh, this Shinpaku. It's in need of a, a trim, maybe cleaning up the surface a little bit. Uh, so we'll go step by step on how to uh, do this. Take a close up view what this looks like before I get started. First thing I'm going to do is to take these really long elongated branches that are becoming very long. That's what I'm cutting. And once again, we are using the tip of the traditional bonsai shear. elongated ones are cut off. What I'm going to do is just to clean up these new shoots that have come on the trunk. Just basically cleaning up. And if there's these little danglies that come down, you could get rid of those also. Basically that's about it. After that, it's just a matter of pinching so that it stays tight and compact. So actually there was not that much uh, to do on this except your minor. Uh, it really doesn't seem to take away from the tree. But looking at this overall presentation of this tree, it is sort of a sad tree in that it had a very hard life and it has survived. And for some reason I feel that especially this pot this shape with the glaze seems like it's a happy pot. I might be splitting hairs that I got. It is very kind of rough looking pot. You know, it's got irregular surfaces. Um, it looks like it did come out of a mold, but it was made to represent a roughly made pot. And it's unglazed, uneven surface. Um, I feel that maybe this tree will look better in here. So uh, once you run across a container like this and you happen to have a tree that fit, that is the perfect uh, solution. Okay, so let's see what happens when I take this tree and put it in this pot and see if I'm correct. So out of one pot, goes into another. Let me so all I have to do is to add just a little bit of fresh soil, rework the surface a little bit, and it's good to go. Um, doesn't always work this smooth, but this one happened to be a simple one. Now, in terms of the surface, now this tree, you can see that it's been through hard life. Where does it uh, survive in a condition like this? Probably not in a real lush area. So on this one, I don't think I'm gonna put moss around it. The moss represents, once again, very lush condition. This thing has gone through very harsh condition, yet survived. So what I'm gonna do is to put gravel sort of to represent a harsh area that is surviving. And to me, this is uh, the final presentation. I just thought that it really does work better with a container like this, where uh, it does not take away and actually enhance the So now, having added the fresh gravel. This looks like a tree that has survived in some very harsh conditions. There's no uh, grasses that grow to suggest that, you know, it's a lush field. It's just somewhere out in the wild where in spite of 
all the hardship it has won and have survived. It, you could tell that it's in very harsh condition, a lot of bad thing has happened, but it has survived and is thriving. And that's kind of a um, good example for people. But that's what I wanted to show in this. And then the, the reason for selection of this pot was to say that it's in harsh condition rather than the more, more traditional happy pot. Now, like I was talking about, uh, very difficult to find just the right pot at the right time. Now, as long as you have the resources, uh, I would say that if you find a pot that you like, grab it. Because it's easier to manipulate the top than to find a pot when you need it. I'll show you the close-up view of the container. You don't see something like this anymore. And like I said, it's probably 20 to 30 years old and it was originally from Japan. But I think it does justice to this side of the tree.